the challenges of life. We all handle them in our own way. Some of us boldly. Some a little more timidly. Where do we get our personalities? Some of our relatives seem to have personalities too. Did these young rhesus monkeys learn to be boisterous? Or are they stuck with behavior inherited from their parents as firmly as they're stuck with their own tails? Trying to find the answer is psychologist Steve Sumi, who studies a colony of 30 monkeys set up for the purpose. When Steve started his research 10 years ago, he soon found out that there are two kinds of young monkeys. This six-month-old is typical of the bold, daring type. Whereas this one's showing clear signs of a shy and timid personality. So is this one. He just won't leave mom alone. In fact, Steve Sumi says, different baby personalities go along with different kinds of relationships between mothers and babies. The boldest babies have a particular kind of mom. Okay, here we have an infant that's unusually bold. Um, he's well away from his mother and he's interacting with these other older monkeys. He's playing like crazy. Um, but for him to keep this up, he has to make sure his mother is still around. So he will be going back to his mother just for a brief period of time just to see that she's there. And then satisfied, he'll go back out and start to play about again. And this is how a mother gives her infant security. That is, she is available when the infant is frightened or needs some comfort but she doesn't interfere when he goes out to explore. Now here's the other extreme, a clinging baby, which goes along with a mother who is very nervous. She likes to keep her baby well out of harm's way. I'll record his initial state as a zero. He's awake and active. This is a newborn, just six days old. Visual orient. The personalities of their monkeys right from birth have been checked out by Steve's research team. Okay, there he goes, good. And a definite, oh, look at this, almost, give him definitely a one in the reach and follow. At this age, an infant hasn't really had time to learn how to behave. So if they can detect any personality, it must be genetic. Okay, there we go. They give standard development tests like the ones human infants might get. And all the time, they're sizing up personality. I'll do that one again. This one obviously takes life as it comes. Nothing much seems to bother him. And as he grows up, he'll probably stay that way. Cuddliness, how does it react to? <laughs> you need to ask. No, he's cuddling. Definitely in the high school for that. His mother is the relaxed but available kind. And he'll be a typical bold and daring baby. The discovery of such early and lasting behavior patterns has convinced the researchers that monkey personality probably isn't learned from parents. It comes down in the genes. Kathleen Rasmussen. We're beginning to see differences even as early as the first week of life in terms of um, some infants are just much more irritable. This one's particularly calm. Here's another newborn. No, he's not sick. He's just very, very nervous. He's reacting to the stress of separation from his mother, who is of the nervous protective type. In fact, the stress is so overwhelming for him that Mary Schneider will find it hard to administer the tests. The researchers call this type of behavior reactive. It'll lead to the timid baby type, who isn't happy exploring on his own. That's how this little fellow will turn out. So this little monkey that's reactive, if we came back tomorrow and went through this test again, he would also be reactive. If we came back in two weeks, he would still be reactive. So behavior is inherited, but can it ever change? Can monkeys and humans learn something different? That's what this experiment is about. Mary has picked out a very reactive newborn to be adopted and raised by the opposite kind of mother, the relaxed type. The first hurdle, though, is getting the foster mother to accept the baby. She might not. 
Now, here's the foster mother. Mary will be closely watching the first encounter for any signs of trouble. It's a good start. She seems perfectly happy with her new baby. This is a mother that has immediately taken this infant up and will accept this infant and provide a very nurturing climate for this infant. It's got the baby's head positioned so that the baby's head is close to the nipple for, for nursing, it's cradling it, she's doing all the right things. She's a good mom. Two months later, adopted baby and foster mother are getting along fine. But is there any change in the baby? Has his mother somehow taught him her more relaxed approach to life? It seems she has. Now he's showing all the signs of being a bold young monkey, happy to play on his own. Not what you'd expect from his nervous, reactive behavior as a newborn. Even more convincing evidence that the foster mother has changed the baby's behavior comes from this exploration test being set up by Kathleen Rasmussen. The baby's living group will be enticed from its familiar cage with a trail of food. This new situation makes them all a little nervous. For the adopted baby, it'll be the first trip out of the cage. That's especially stressful. Still, bananas are a powerful inducement, so they head down the tunnel. Throughout this high stress time, the baby has been clinging firmly to his foster mother. Suddenly, there's a squabble, prompting the whole group to scramble back to the security of the cage. But just a few minutes later, the bananas reassert their power, and amazingly enough, the adopted baby is striding out boldly on his own. It's too much even for his relaxed foster mother, so she tries to hold him back. But he's having none of it. It's a typical bold behavior pattern. Transformation from timid newborn seems complete. With their foster mother's backing, these patterns seem to hold as they grow older so that even though they may have a genetic risk for being shy or timid, they've learned how to cope with the challenges that they encounter, largely through interactions with their nurturant foster mother. Four months later, we're back with the development tests, with the same baby who started life as a nervous, reactive newborn and then calmed down with a relaxed foster mother. But now, separated from his foster mother for the tests, he's not at all happy. This is an infant who has been with the foster mother, who is very calm and nurturing, and he's done quite well with his foster mother. Now he is under conditions of challenge. He has reverted back to being a very highly reactive individual. He's upset, he's distressed, he's vocalizing. In extreme situations, the baby's genes win out. He was born nervous and reactive, and that'll always make it harder for his type to cope with a tough world. High reactive infants that grow up in benign environments won't have any problems at all. High reactive infants that grow in, up in environments full of stress and challenge will need help if they want to make it through in a successful fashion. What Steve Sumi's research suggests is that a parent's behavior toward their child has a real effect within limits on that child's attitude about life. Does that mean that we want to take all of our very nervous and timid human babies and pair them up with carefully chosen, highly nurturing foster parents? Of course not. The thing that differentiates humans from rhesus monkeys is that we're not stuck in our behavior patterns. We can actually change if we want to. And I think the research shows something very simple, that ideal parents are always there when you need them.